Hello people, in this video we want to look at uh, the pathogenesis of HIV that is the human immunodeficiency virus. First let's take a recap of what we have seen so far. So far uh, we started off with uh, uh, the human immunodeficiency virus which can further later lead to AIDS. It later leads to AIDS. Okay. So HIV infection is not called AIDS. HIV infection is HIV infection or HIV positive person. Later on, it if it progresses, then it becomes a disease called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Right? <clears throat> Fine. So now let us just uh, continue forward. Uh, we saw that uh, HIV virus is an RNA virus. It has an enzyme reverse transcriptase. So it is an RNA virus which has reverse transcriptase. So it goes reverse and becomes DNA in the host cell. The DNA that it makes, that DNA comes and combines with our DNA. And then when our DNA goes through replication, transcription, translation, what happens? The viral uh, proteins get synthesized. Okay, So this is a way of working backwards. So that's why it's called as reverse transcriptase virus or retrovirus. Okay. Now, retrovirus, uh, uh, HIV is not the only virus which is retrovirus. There's another virus called HTLV that is human, human T cell lymphotrophic virus, which is also a retrovirus. The genus is lentivirus. If you want, you can remember that. Okay, this is a small introduction. Then we saw the history of HIV. We saw that the first case was here in New York. And um, actually how this disease came from uh, chimpanzee, it came to man in rural Africa. The virus then in humans underwent adaptation, right? It went adaptation and it now causes epidemic, okay? It has now caused epidemic in the world. Uh, the epidemiology of uh, HIV we have seen, basically the global situation is something like 0.8% adults are affected. That is 35 million people are affected. They are living with HIV. So that is the global situation. And uh, it causes a lot of deaths. Because there is, as of now, there is no cure to HIV. Now, coming to the situation in India, there is 0.27% prevalence. 0.27% prevalence, which is lesser than the global situation. Correct? But in Nagaland, that is a state of India, the prevalence is 0.8%. Uh, more than that, right? 0.88% is there in Nagaland. So, Nagaland has a higher uh, prevalence than the global situation. In, in India, the states which are affected more are Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Okay. Now, reservoir. Now, who is the reservoir? The infected people themselves are the reservoirs of uh, HIV. High-risk groups are um, uh, homosexuals, people who have multiple sex partners like prostitutes, etc. Then, uh, intra, uh, people who are healthcare workers are also high-risk groups. So, I myself am a high-risk group because I am a healthcare worker. So, because of needle uh, prick injury or handling blood, the blood products, having an uh, aberration on my own skin, open wound on myself and then getting exposed to another person who has HIV, all such things are uh, going to make me high risk. Then you have IV drug users, intravenous drug users who are uh, sharing needles and using the same needle again and again. Those people are also high risk group. Then coming to the last uh, here, this one. This is actually telling what, I can't even see it. What is it? Okay, okay, it is about blood transfusion. So whoever is taking blood transfusion, like people who have hemophilia, thalassemia, those people are also high risk groups for HIV. Now AIDS control organization, there are two. In the state we have, uh, uh, in the national level we have uh, NACO, that is National AIDS Control Organization, NACO, NACO. And in the state, we have State AIDS Prevention and Control Societies. Prevention, Prevention, Prevention and Control Societies. Okay, SACS, SACS. In the state, we have SACS. Let's move on now to the morphology. Morphology, we, you have to draw this diagram in the exam, this beautiful circle. Uh, so look at the morphology. Let's revise the morphology once. So this is the GP protein um, and this is also GP protein, this green and pink. And they form the G, uh, glycoproteins which are attached to this lipid layer, lipid envelope. Okay, envelope is uh, lipid. So together they constitute the envelope. Okay, 
this gp41 is also called as transmembrane pedicle okay transmembrane pedicle it is called so this gp120 is actually helping in the uh, invasion binding to the host uh, cd4 cells and all that uh, gp20 is the one that will help now and then inside the envelope you have matrix this thing is the matrix then in the center you have the genetic material two identical copies of rna two identical copies of rna with the rna polymerase right and around them you have the core the nucleocapsid everything you have so this is the hiv morphology now let us move on genes and antigens we saw so there are structural genes which are uh, gag gene envelope, uh, envelope gene and pol gene so these three are uh, going to generate proteins which form this morphology which form the structure like uh, somebody forms the core somebody forms the shell uh, the env envelope genes produce these proteins gp120 gp41 right so <clears throat> these are the genes that produce these antigens or these proteins okay in core antigen you can remember 24 p24 is principal core antigen they are seeing and p18 is nucleocapsid protein if you want to remember you can remember this gp12014 the 41 this you should not forget then uh, coming to the pol genes which produces the viral enzymes p51 makes the reverse transcriptase so can you focus on this one p51 say p51 reverse transcriptase okay p51 is reverse transcriptase so we finished the genes and antigens we finished the structural genes now let us move on to non structural genes there are a lot of non structural genes like tat nef rev wif vpu vpr vpx ltr okay what exactly these do are there here if you want you can look at it otherwise we have covered it in the previous video also just look at it tat is transcriptional transactivator gene it's essential for hiv1 replication nef is uh, negative factor gene it down regulate cd4 expression then uh, rev rev is uh, regulator of virus gene <clears throat> it enhances the expression of structural proteins then wif wif is viral infectivity factor gene so it uh, influences the infectivity of viral particles vpu vpu promotes the cd4 degeneration okay cd4 degeneration tat tat nef rev wif vpu vpr increases the transport of viral genome into the nucleus and also arrests host growth vpx is found in hiv2 but not in hiv1 and in siv it is closely related to vpr ltr means long terminal repeat it is present on both ends provides provide promoter enhancer and integration signals at least remember the names tat nef rev wif vpu vpr vpx ltr okay guys in this epidemiology one more point we wanted to add is this in sub saharan african countries the prevalence is like 1 in 20 1 in 20 people will have hiv so be very careful if you are going there or working there so now let's move on we saw the antigen right okay then we will see the antigenic variation and diversity so basically trans reverse transcriptase is error prone uh, there can be antigenic diversity the most mutations are in the envelope in the envelope gene that makes what gp 120 and gp 41 correct so these uh, are the most uh, they will change so much you know so the envelope looks so different the antigens look so different so the hiv virus evades uh, human immune so when somebody says hiv virus people get irritated because v is already in virus it's fine don't break your head so much hiv evades human immune host immune now vaccination against hiv is difficult because of this antigenic variation now hiv serotyping uh, you have two serotypes hiv1 and hiv2 guys we have two serotypes hiv1 and hiv2 under hiv1 you have mnop mn mno very common m is very uh, important also okay now disinfection and uh, inactivation we saw that household bleach ethanol lysol formaldehyde uh, hydrogen peroxide heating extreme ph also can kill uh, or disinfect hiv we didn't go into much details of this guys 
if you want you can go into details of this now <clears throat> pathogenesis modes of transmission now we came to the exact topic for this video pathogenesis so modes of transmission then we look at uh, how once it enters as receptor attachment then replication right so pathogenesis uh, we are looking at these three first of all after that we look at more details okay so much more details is there first mode of transmission guys we are looking at mode of transmission for mode of transmission look at this diagram from national aids control organization this is the transmission of the virus so pay attention here uh, transmission of hiv so blood transfusion risk is the highest highest risk is blood transfusion okay and uh, parent to child is next highest uh, risk interesting right parent to child has become the next highest risk sexual intercourse actually is just 1% 0.1 to 1% risk of transmission <clears throat> vaginal is higher anal uh, intercourse also can spread uh, hiv and oral intercourse also can spread hiv injection drug abuse that is the iv drug uh, users then needle stick exposure like for health workers like me and unknown also there are there unknown ah somehow they got papa okay so can you uh, revise this and tell what you saw in transmission of hiv blood transfusion main then parent to child is next <clears throat> then um, uh, sexual intercourse that is where it starts so point 1 to 1% vaginal then in uh, anal then oral right uh, then in iv drug abuse needle stick exposure unknown the iv and the needle stick exposure this is where we are and we are the uh, lowest risk uh, according to this <clears throat> but you should be safe guys in this mode of transmission just look at the indian scenario in india percentage of total transmission 88.9% is sexual see 88% is sexual in india it's mainly because of sex vaginal sex heterosexual then is parent to child sex and parent to child are the most in india mode of transmission unknown surprisingly is higher in india so remember in india the sexual intercourse in parent to child is more okay then moving on <clears throat> in pathogenesis next uh, let us look at receptor attachment this is not going to be easy you have to pay attention here to receptor attachment okay in pathogenesis so much is there okay look at this receptor attachment then replication of the virus immunopathogenesis kinetics of immune response and opportunistic infections we'll cover everything okay so it is going to be a long journey pay attention here now where we are in receptor attachment okay okay i hope you're awake <clears throat> so shall we start off with receptor attachment so you should know the receptors okay so basically the main receptor is the cd4 uh, receptor on uh, t helper cells right helper t cells there will be cd4 right so that is going to be the main receptor so here what you are going to focus on main receptor is cd4 it is present on many types of cells like it can be present on helper t cells monocytes macrophages langerhans cells astrocytes keratinocytes glial cells and even in dendritic cells okay which are in the skin so it can be present everywhere <clears throat> so that is the main receptor then there is a co receptor a co receptor on t lymphocytes you should have one more receptor here crc C X C R four, okay. C X C R four on T lymphocytes. Wait, we'll draw that also. <clears throat> Bring this diagram here, which is the other uh, receptor, secondary. That is going to be C X C R four. That is on T helper cell. That is going to be our secondary receptor. so remember cd4 is the primary that's the main receptor then you have cxcr4 is the secondary co receptor on t lymphocytes and uh, ccr5 ccr5 is present on macrophage uh, cells of macrophage lineage okay so this much you understood right these are the receptors then you have something on the dendritic cells dendritic cells they have lectin receptors but uh, these receptors no they won't help the virus to enter the 
cell. It will just bind to this receptor and on the dendritic cells, these VHIV will attach. But this will help in transport of these virus to lymphoid organs. Did you understand? What exactly are we trying to say in the dendritic cells? The HIV virus bind to these dendritic cells. They don't invade these cells. The dendritic help, cells help this virus to reach lymphoid organs. That's all. So actually the uh, second co-receptor is there, right? CXCR4 and CCR5. These help the entry of the virus into host cell. So, so far we saw the receptor binding. This is going to bind, right? Bind to <clears throat> T helper cells. Binding over, entry over. Now we will continue with the pathogenesis, okay? In pathogenesis, where we are? Receptor attachment, easy, over. Now we are going to replication. Now the virus has entered, now it wants to replicate. Do we have a slide for replication? Yes, replication. Now replication, what and all headings are there here? Let us see, fusion. So fusion means the attachment of the receptor and co-receptor to GP120, fusion of HIV to host cell takes place mediated by fusion protein GP41. So here still they are talking about binding only. Binding of receptors, right? CD4 and co-receptor GP120 of the virus. And now GP41 helps in what? Fusion. GP41 helps in Fusion. That's why it's called fusion protein. So you remember GP41. GP41 was actually the transmembrane pedicle. Remember this diagram? In this we have already seen. GP41 is transmembrane ped pedicle. It's called as fusion protein. It will help in the fusion of all these things. Okay. What and all? The receptors, the co-receptor and Receptor, co-receptor and GP120. All these things will bind. Fuse. Now next step here. Penetration and uncoating. So basically the virus now after fusion, the HIV nucleocapsid enters the host cell. What is entering? The nucleocapsid is entering the host cell which followed by uncoating and releases two copies of the single-stranded RNA and the viral enzymes. So now what will happen? Nucleocapsid enters, uncoating happens and it releases the two copies of RNA and the enzymes. Pretty clear, right? Nobody is confused, right? At this stage, everybody is fine. <clears throat> so, where did the virus enter? It entered the cell. Right? It entered the cell. Now, the virus is inside. Okay. Next step is what? Reverse transcriptase. Cryptase. Now, reverse transcription happens. Now, reverse transcription is the next step. Now, what will the virus do? It has entered. Now, it has to convert this SSRNA to SSDNA. So, single-stranded RNA becomes single stranded dna okay then uh, actually this uh, dna is actually ha having a, a dna rna hybrid the rna gets degraded now ss dna replicates to form ds dna now it becomes double stranded dna so single stranded rna became single stranded dna then further it is becoming double stranded dna now this double stranded DNA, what it will do, as you already know, this DNA has to go and join with our DNA, right? But before that itself, some amount of transcription happens and some viral proteins are formed. Then comes the next step here, the pre-integration complex, okay? They are calling it as the pre integration complex. Basically it has to go and uh, integrate into our DNA, correct? So this double stranded DNA which is there has to go and integrate with our DNA. So before that one pre-integration complex it has formed. The nucleoprotein complex formed, okay, there is a nucleoprotein complex that is a pre-integration complex which has formed. It consists of what and all, it will have this double stranded DNA some gag matrix protein, okay, some accessory VPR protein, 
All this you studied. Remember in non-structural protein VPR. All this. And viral integrase. Without integrase, how it will integrate? No. So it needs this integrase enzyme. Okay. So this is called as the pre-integration complex. Now it enters the nucleus. Now it is entering nucleus guys. Now it is entering host nucleus. Okay. Now after it enters host nucleus, the viral double-stranded DNA gets integrated into the host cell chromosome by what? By the viral integrase. Integrates with our host, our chromosome. Right? So what is integrating? DS DNA, double-stranded DNA. With help of what? With help of viral integrase. Inti inti Grace enzyme, correct? Integrase, okay, enzyme. So this is called as provirus. What is provirus? The integrated virus is called provirus. Provirus. What is provirus, guys? Provirus is this double-stranded DNA integrates into the host cell chromosome. The integrated virus is called provirus. Hold on. So we have tried to explain here. This is the helper T cell. This is the nucleus. Inside the nucleus chromosome, this virus uh, double-stranded DNA went and go, uh, got integrated. This is the provirus now. What is this now? Provirus. Very good. Then it is there is a latency. That is the last step in this uh, uh, replication uh, we want to explain. Latency. Latency is in this integrated state itself. The HIV establishes a latent infection. Okay. For a variable period. So many years also it can just be like this only. Okay. So that's all we want to see now in this replication. So what and all we saw in replication? We saw fusion. It will fuse, penetrate and uncoat. Reverse transcription happens, pre-integration complex, enter the nucleus, form the provirus and then latency. So now that replication is over, the next step is immunopathogenesis. In pathogenesis, you have to study about immunopathogenesis. So shall we go to immunopathogenesis? I think uh, it is too much for now, right? So immunopathogenesis, you have to learn about the acute HIV disease or the Acute retroviral syndrome, asymptomatic stage, persistent generalized lymphadenopathy, systemic HIV infection, AIDS. Finally only it goes to AIDS. Okay, AIDS is not um, initial. HIV then in progression it leads to AIDS. After that we will look at the kinetics of immune response in pathogenesis itself. Then we will see uh, opportunistic infections, lab diagnosis we have to see. Lab diagnosis in newborn, clinical diagnosis, HIV, the treatment, all the treatment we have to look at, how to monitor the progression we have to look at, post-exposure prophylaxis like uh, prevention for uh, uh, infection if there is a needle stick injury, right, needle stick or stick. So needle stick injury only it is called, then vaccination strategy is not important for exam actually. But uh, so far whatever we have seen. World AIDS Day is December 1st, guys. So remember at the end of the year only it is. So let us continue the next video with pathogenesis of HIV. Thank you for joining this long video. Enjoy. Bye-bye.